Hey, it's Anya here at Our Gabled Home where I like to share tips for a simple, beautiful, healthy, and sustainable living in a natural home. Um, if you've been watching my last video about how to make a sourdough starter, so today is the day that we're baking bread. It's early in the morning. You can see that with the sun all around me. That's how I like to do it. That's my routine, and I want to invite you into my kitchen and show you how I make it. My starter is ready. I actually took that out last night and um, again I was talking about that in my last video how I compacted it down and put a lot of flour in it and put it in the refrigerator to make it a little bit more inactive and now I am um, going to use it however last night I took it out I and again it always pains me I dumped out about half maybe a good third of my starter and add a little bit more water, filtered water, and a little bit more flour, and let that sit on the countertop. So what I have right now is the sourdough, I'm gonna show you a better picture, that is very foamy and bubbly and airy and has a pleasant sour smell. So we're gonna use that to make our bread today. Now we're gonna make the bread and I like to grind my own grains. For that purpose, I have an attachment for my KitchenAid um, stand mixer. They're in the back and this is the grain mill attachment. I love that because um, I don't have another um, device in my kitchen that I'm only using for one purpose. So I have my KitchenAid anyways and I can put this um, grain mill attachment onto it. That's what I'm gonna do now, I'll put that on. And since I know that I'll be baking my bread in a, uh, I measured it because it didn't have any measurements on the bottom, it's about nine and a half by four and a half inches loaf pan. I've used this many, 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 many years. I'm going to use that again so I know how much um, grains or flour I need to um, get the pan full. And so I've measured it out. I have about two cups of get out of the morning light here. I have two cups of whole organic wheat grains, berries. I'm gonna put them in here. Then what I like to use is rye berries, organic rye berries. Um, they do really well with sourdough. So my grandma attachment is pretty full at this point, so I'm gonna wait putting that in. However, I can show you what else I'm gonna put in. I will put in a cup of flaxseed. That's completely optional. I like that, I like the taste, I like that it gives it a um, deeper, um, more pronounced flavor, but you can totally optional leave that out. You can use any other grains. You can use um, millet in there. You can use einkorn. Um, I've been really successful with spelt right now. I don't have spelt. Usually I like to um, bake with spelt more than with wheat. And the options are just endless here and you can totally customize it. There's so many cool ancient grains and gluten-free grains if that's more what you're um, looking for. And then what I'm gonna add is um, salt. You wanna add salt because salt controls the level of sourness. And then I will put some caraway seeds in there. You will not taste the caraway seeds because I will put them in here with my grains when I'm grinding them. Um, it helps with digestion. Oftentimes I like to put a little cardamom in there. I'm gonna link the recipe below. You can start with a very simple recipe and just use wheat. And then you can add options from there on and you can um, do whatever you want. Like traditionally bread used to be water, flour and salt. And that's a very basic place to start um, because I've been making it so many decades I have figured out the kind of um, combination mixture that I like so that's what I'm just showing you here um, to spark your creativity and um, let you experiment on your own. So now I'm going to grind the grains and that's going to be loud. So I'm going to actually keep that going 
and come back in a little bit because you don't need to watch me grind my grains for 10 minutes. Um, maybe it may not be that much, maybe it's only five minutes, but I will come back when this is done and show you what we'll do then. Now my grains have been ground and this is what they look like. I've got a full bowl, bowl of ground flour. I like to keep it a little bit coarse. Let me show you that in the camera here so you can see that there's um, a lot of the bran. So now we'll add the sourdough starter to it. And all we'll do is just dump that in there. So I'm just always adding a little bit of water and then mixing. You don't want this to get too runny. And it's easy, I've done that myself, that I put too much water in there and then I had to more, add more flour in there and then the bread was really um, wet and it wasn't right right, so you only make that mistake once. Okay. So this is how I like it. You'll see this here. It's um, a really heavy dough. It's not runny, but it kind of stays together, if that makes sense. I will also measure out exactly how much water I put in there because I gave you the cup measurements for the grains and I'll link that in the recipe below so you have a good starting point and then you can um, take it from there. Now we'll cover it up and let it sit in a warm spot. You can let it sit by the heater, you can let it sit in the sun. Um, obviously your sourdough depends on so many factors, just like your starter on your temperature, the ambient temperature, the ambient moisture, the um, other bacteria in the air. And um, sometimes I feel like um, my own mood somehow goes into my sourdough. So it's not a static product it's something that is alive and changes all the time so um just let it sit somewhere and i will come back in a few hours so let's see i'm gonna come back in about four or five hours and show you what the sourdough looks like then and then we'll determine if we need to let it sit a little bit longer or if we're happy and if we're ready to put it into the loaf pan now here's my sourdough after it's risen for a few hours it's nice and stringy and a little bit fluffy and i think we're ready to put it in the loaf pan i'll take some starter out for next time so i take about a quarter cup out and put that in a jar and i'll add a lot of flour to it to make it a very thick paste and then put that in the refrigerator i like to add some walnuts to my bread and mix that all up in a non-reactive bowl. This is my enameled bowl, and then put that all in my loaf pan. And here's my bread. We'll let that sit covered in a warm spot to let it rise again until we are ready to bake. It's about seven o'clock tonight, and let's see what the bread looks like. Ooh, I like how it has risen and this reminds me I really need to make a um, beeswax wrap that works both for my dough bowl and for my loaf pan. So here's the bread before baking. I don't know if you can see that it has a bit of a rounded top but I can see that it has definitely risen so that's a good success right there. I will put my oven on to let's see 350 degrees start and i'll put the bread right in i don't have to wait for the oven to get hot let me see if i can do this with one hand while i'm holding the camera bread goes in the oven here we go and i'll set the timer for an hour and a half. My timer has gone off and we're ready to take the bread out of the oven. Let's have a look at it. Oh my goodness, look at the really nice round top here. Let's see if I can take it out without burning myself. 
But here we go. Put it right on top of the stove. Turn off the oven. And I hope that you can see how it has even risen more with baking and how nice and round the top is. I don't know if you can hear the hollow sound. One of the tests for doneness is also if you flip it and tap the underside of it, if that sounds hollow, then your bread is done. What I'll do at this point is I'll let it sit a little bit before I try to take it out of the loaf pan and uh, let it cool off overnight and tomorrow morning we'll cut off a slice and taste it. how easy it is to make your own bread. I also want to mention how we keep our bread fresh and that is by wrapping it in a cotton bag or towel and um, here's a little trick I actually keep it in my oven of course not when I'm baking something I'll take it out let the oven cool down and put it back in what that does is um, there's a lot of air circulation and um, it keeps the bread from getting moldy now sourdough bread is a little less susceptible to mold than yeast breads and let me show you what this bread looks like after five days of course it's shrunken a lot but as you can see there's no mold on it if you'd like to make your own sourdough starter you can check in the description below i have a link to a video where i show you how to make your own sourdough starter please ask me all your questions in the comment section below and if you've enjoyed watching this video please Subscribe to my channel. You can also hop on over to my blog, ourgabledhome.com, where I share more recipes like that. Mm -hmm.